morning, reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 9. But I would not walk, but I would not talk to you, my friends. As people who have the spirit, I had to deal with you on the natural plane. As infants in Christ, I fed you on milk instead of solid food, for which you were not yet ready. Indeed, you are still not ready for it. You are still on the merely natural plane. Can you not see that as long as there is jealousy and strife among you, you are unspiritual, living on the purely human level? When one declares, I am for Paul, and another, I am for, I am for Apollos, are you not all too human? After all, what is Apollos? What is Paul? Simple God's agents in bringing you to faith. Each of us performed the task which the Lord assigned to him. I planted the seed and Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. It is not the gardeners with their planting and watering who count, but God who makes, who makes it grow. Whether they plant or water, they work as a team, though each will get his own pay for his own labor. We are fellow workers in God's service, and you are God's garden. We'll be missing Spirit of the Living God, number 308, 308. Spirit of the Living God, fall of flesh, 308. We'll sing this twice. Spirit of the Living God, fall of flesh. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me. Use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, and uh, material blessings. That's why 
Paul wrote this uh, chapter 13. In that chapter 13, he talked about uh, their gift of the Spirit. They were having the gift of the healing, the Word of God, all sort of the blessings were there. But there was a lack of one thing. That was a problem in that church. There was a lack of love. When we are talking about the responsibilities, especially among the believers, this is the most important responsibility for the mature believers. The two types of the people in the churches, those who are spiritually mature and those who are not spiritually mature, they are immature. So Paul wrote this uh, letter, the people, those who are not spiritually mature. And they were having a big problem in the church. So we are different. In our society, we are having the blaming game. We are blaming other people all the time. It's not my fault. We are saying all the time. We are saying that's the fault of the other people. That's in our inherent problem. In the book of Genesis, you can see how there were only two people. And they start blaming one another. Even they were having argument with God. Adam said, this is not my fault, what I have done, if I became disobedient, that's the fault of this woman, you gave me that. And the woman, the Eve said, oh it's not my fault, because Satan, he provoked me, that's why I have given this fruit to my husband. So nobody took the responsibility. But that's not a genuine excuse. We need to go back to the word of God and we need to find out who is responsible for our decisions. Because your decisions are very important when we are talking about the responsibility. What you are deciding, that's very important when we are talking about the responsibility. What is the responsibility? In English language, it's a burden of obligations over someone and something. Our duty, commitment, legally bound to do something. When you are working, there is a contract, there is an agreement. When you are doing your work, in response to that, they are giving you your salary. If you are not fulfilling your responsibility, you will be in trouble because you are breaking the contract, you are breaking that uh, a deed or agreement. In Hebrew, there is a beautiful word, Echrot. Echrot is a word which is mean accountability. So we are accountable for our actions. We are accountable for this uh, legal requirement. But the decision we are answerable to uh, others. And uh, this is our moral duty. We are liable. We are responsible for our decisions in our lives. Accountability towards our neighbors. Accountability towards our creator. So they are as I said that there are two types of the responsibilities, obligation. According to this verdict, it said there are two big responsibility laying upon us. First responsibility or the obligation or the commandment is love thy God with all your power, with all your strength, with all your knowledge. That is a, a responsibility. It's not uh, optional. It's our obligation. It's our duty to love our Creator because He is worthy of that love 
We need to be responsible in our conduct life. Then this is a collective responsibility as a body of Christ. We just read that in the first Corinthians. We are believers. We are the people of God. So as a church, what is my responsibility towards other people in the church? What is my responsibility as a body of Christ? Our action, our character is very important as we are saying that we are the body of Christ. Brother and sister, our actions, our decisions are very important. For our responsibilities, somebody said the responsibility is the price of greatness. We have to pay the price for that. If you want to become blessed, victorious, separated, chosen one, we have to pay the price for that. That's not an easy task. When Jesus came to this world, he fulfilled his obligation, his duty, the will of God. And he paid the price for that. He went on the cross. So for the sake of service among the believers in the church, maybe you need to pay the price for your time, your money, your efforts. But everyone had to pay the price for that. In relation to that responsibility, the price is also very important. Try to become a responsible person because we are responsible for that. As I said, that is a personal responsibility. You know, there are people, those who are always talking about uh, their rights. That's a, a state of mind. So many times we are listening to people, that's my right. Right to live in this country. Right to have the uh, uh, NHS. Right to have the finances. But how many times, collectively, individually, we are thinking about our responsibilities. That's why, you know, in the cabinet or in the other areas of life, people are so uncomfortable. When some people, they are enjoying their uh, benefits, but they are not fulfilling their responsibility in the society. So in the church, so many times they say, oh, this is my right. This is my right to enjoy that. Well, I told so many times in the church that, okay, we are enjoying uh, this building. We are worshipping in this place. But what about our responsibility as a member of this church? We need to be responsible for the maintenance. We need to be responsible for the cleaning. We need to be responsible for the protection of the people, those who are worshipping here. I always have two main purpose when I'm, uh, I'm serving among the people. The first is the quality of worship. When people they are coming from near and far, our church is in the 40 mile radius. So when people are coming here in this place of worship, we need to offer them the quality of worship because they are coming to have fellowship with God. So if they are not enjoying that fellowship, what are the use of that? The other thing is the quality of fellowship. When they are coming with their families, they need to feel protective. Oh, now I'm coming with my family. So there shouldn't be any dirty jokes. There shouldn't be joker in the church, you know. It's a place of worship. So when we are enjoying the benefit, when we are enjoying our life, so we need to remember that what is our responsibility. And in the Ten Commandments, God has given us responsibility, responsibility towards God. We need to worship only one God. There shouldn't be any idol worship. And then the Seven Commandments, there is a responsibility towards other people. Do not steal. Do not lie. Respect your parents. Respect your neighbor. So these are 
the Ten Commandments. You know, why people, they are not fulfilling their responsibility? There is another problem with the victim mentality. They are coming with that sort of a victim mentality and they fail to fulfill their responsibility. They believe, oh, I'm a victim of this because uh, my parents, they didn't treat me well. Oh, that nobody is coming to help me. Other day, uh, the family, they, 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 they give that excuse. They fail to come to church. And I said, why you didn't come to church? And they said, oh, because our car is not uh, working. I said, you went to abroad and you paid the price for ticket. And you are not willing to pay 10 quid for the church. Even you got the money. And you are blaming other people. Nobody came to pick me up. That's a, a blame game, you know. So we are letting go of a victim of that. There was a guy who was uh, sick for 38 years. And uh, he was laying out there near the water and he was blaming other people. Nobody is helping me put me in the water. And he asked me, do you want to heal? He started living with the people. So this is the problem. When we are having that victim mentality, we fail to fulfill our responsibility. Then there is another problem. We are thinking that we are not uh, worthy to do that. Entitlement mentality. Why I do that? This is, my, this is not my duty. Sometimes in the church, you know, people are saying, if we say, oh, please, would you do that? Oh, no, no, this is not my responsibility. This is a responsibility to our elders. It's a collective effort. That's why Paul was saying, I beseech you. I request you. This is a problem when people are saying, this is not my responsibility. This is the responsibility of the leaders. Once I asked for the prayer in my village church back to country in Pakistan, and I asked someone to... Uh, pray in the church and he failed to pray and after service I said why didn't you pray and he said oh if I will pray well, what's the use of your appointment you know this responsibility of the pastor to lead the prayer no this is a collective you can see that the children the young and the old they are, they are coming with the friend they are helping me in the ministry read, through reading the scripture leading the choir helping in the church in the cleaning other things so this is a collective uh, effort why we should take our responsibility? Why? Why? That's a that's a question. Why I should fulfill my responsibility? The first thing is God is watching. Don't think that okay, maybe pastor is not there, he's not watching. God is watching. Somebody is looking at us. Are we fulfilling our responsibility or not? Then, with our responsibility. Other people are being affected. When you are doing good things, when you are fulfilling your obligation, if somebody is cleaning the church, helping me in that, so other people they are affected by that because they have fulfilled their responsibility. And when you are coming to church, you are enjoying the cleanness of the church. So by your decision, by your services, by your responsibilities, other people they are enjoying that. They are blessed by that. When Jesus fulfilled his responsibility, he went on the cross and he gave his life. By his precious word, we are enjoying the blessing. This is another good thing. There is a reward for that if you are fulfilling your responsibility. There is a, there is a story about the three people, those who got the talents. One, he made that five, ten, other he made that with two talents to four. The one who got the one talent, he just hidden that one. But the person who made more, God gave him more talent. But who failed to fulfill his responsibility, obligation, the owner of that talent, he sent him to the prison. So this is a judgment. We should fulfill our responsibility. Try to be a, a responsible person. There is a reward for that. God will bless you. Bless you. He will bless your family if you will fulfill your responsibility. 
what we need to do take control of your thoughts hand it over yourself to god don't start blaming other people admit your weaknesses and we need to acknowledge in the presence of god of course sometimes uh, we believe that oh i'm not capable of doing that we need to uh, ask him and for the sake of spiritual blessing spiritual progress if you will fulfill your responsibility you will grow spiritually you will have more blessing so in this morning we need to think about our responsibility as a children as a parents as a church member as a good citizen what we need to do this is a clear instructions in the bible we need to go back to the book which is a manual for our life we need to ask the spirit of god please help me that i may fulfill my responsibility try to be a responsible person as a parents when we see that our children they are um, they are serving well they are helping us they are responsible it's a real source of joy so if you will fulfill your responsibility definitely your heavenly father he will like that and he will bless you let us pray loving god heavenly father we give you thanks we learn from you because you fulfill your responsibility obligation you came with a mission with a responsibility and beside all the problems suffering pain you fulfill your responsibility you gave your life for us almighty god as a disciple as a people of god in the church loving god help us that we may fulfill our obligation our duty our responsibility what you have given us